So I said earlier that the you know when when you see a a world you don't see um, you don't see lines and colors as such. You see objects. You see these higher order structures. You see faces. You see people. Um, you see trees. You see animals, etc. Um, but hopefully now you can appreciate that they are constructed from these these much simpler features, and they're kind of brought together. Um, so for the, the remainder of this video, what I want to do is just give you a kind of a heads up on on how this construction works, and and actually look at in a slightly more realistic sense, um, the way that these functionally segregated sets of cortical columns, these functionally segregated areas of the cortex uh, that contain columns that are specialized representing specific features of the world. So let's have a look at a, a diagram. So this is a diagram of the visual cortex. And the visual cortex actually sits at the back of the brain. And here you can see a slice that's been kind of pulled out for you to see where it is. And as I said before, information actually comes from the senses, from the eyes here, and actually initially goes, uh, using action potentials, of course, uh, to the visual cortex. And information passes through the visual cortex through a number of areas. Um, the first area to receive information, um, sensory information, basically a pattern of action potentials, is um, V1, aptly named. This information is then passed, again using action potentials, to V2, then to V3, V4, and uh, V5, this higher order area of the brain. So let's look at this in a more simplified fashion. I think it makes um, sense to um, to look at the hierarchical nature of, of your model of reality and the way it's constructed by the brain in this hierarchical fashion uh, by working backwards. Um, then we will work forwards again. Um, now, we saw when we examined and kind of analysed the, the inside of the, the subway train that, it, that, it, that this higher order structure this inside of the subway train could be broken down into um, more basic units and that there's a, kind of a hierarchical embedding of these features. So we went from lines and colors and textures through to faces and people and then you know the, this, this um, overarching idea of this uh, it being on the inside of this subway train. Uh, and we can, we can see the same thing here. And we'll kind of do the same thing, except we will then relate it to um, the way the brain works and the way the brain actually structures this. So, so the little alien face here, this is a um, clearly now recognizable to you as being this alien face. Um, and this is what we would call the high order sometimes called a summary model. Um, but basically it, it encapsulates, it's, it's, it's the whole thing that you recognize as a particular object. But of course it's composed of smaller, lower order uh, units. So we can take the alien face and we could break it up. We could say, well, um, the alien face has eyes. And they have a particular form. Um, there is a, a mouth. which also has a particular form. And there is, I don't know, the ears, for example, which are rather different. Um, and then we can take those and we can break those up into more basic units. What we're trying to do here is, is, is break up this higher order image into um, the most basic types of information the brain is basically receiving from the, uh, from the outside world. Your brain is receiving these very noisy patterns of sensory information. It isn't receiving this picture of an alien face. It has to actually construct that um, using partially at least sensory information that it's receiving. So we can break up the, the eyes into, well, quite obviously we've got certain shapes that we're familiar with. Um, a circle, we also have um, more elliptical shapes where the nostrils are. Of course, we've also got colors, right? So we've got yellow, 
um, we've got blue. And the reason that I'm separating the shapes and the colors is because the color information is generated and represented by different cortical columns to lines and shapes. It's a different set of cortical columns. It's not until we reach the higher order end of the hierarchy that all of this is put together to form this higher order structure, um, the face. So there are cortical columns in the, the early parts of the visual hierarchy, so you know, V1 and V2, that are specialized for, uh, for recognizing and representing uh, lines and lines in certain orientations. So there are, there are cortical columns that are specialized for uh, recognizing and representing, generating the information that represents certain colors, um, which is why we're breaking it down this way. So this is all what we would call, I think I've got a good color here, this is, uh, this is all low order. Okay, so now let's relate this uh, to the brain and what we saw just a bit ago when we looked at the, the structure of the, uh, the basic structure of the uh, visual cortex. So we'll clear this away and we'll start again, but this time we'll start from the lower end. So, so information is received, of course, from the senses. So we have the eye and we have sensory information entering the eye in the form of light. And this is then passed using basically a pattern of action potentials, of course, via a structure called the thalamus, which we will ignore for the time being, to these lower order areas of the brain. So we looked at, for example, uh, V1 was the very first. Uh, and this is going to rec uh, recognize very basic things, such as you know, lines and particular orientations, uh, and also basic color information as well. Um, don't worry too much about which particular areas of the cortex are associated with exactly which um, types of information. The important point is that we're going from lower order patterns of information to higher order structures, more and more complex. Uh, so we've got low order here, at the bottom end, and then obviously high order at the top end. So then this information is passed from V2, to uh, other areas of the cortex, such as v, uh, v2 and v3, uh, from v1 to v2 and v3, etc., etc. So this is what you might call medium order, and then upwards through the hierarchy uh, until you reach um, the top of the hierarchy, um, where you get these higher order structures uh, being generated. So your, your model of the world is hierarchical um, in that it, it, it's constructed from more basic, fundamental, low complexity units that are put together. Uh, and you can see that in, in your world. Um, and it's, it, it, your world actually appears like that because that is how it is actually constructed by your brain in this hierarchical fashion from low order basic fundamental types of information all the way to much higher order structures such as the alien face. So different columns are responsible for representing different types of information and these columns are arranged in the cortex in the this kind of hierarchical fashion. So there are columns in this area we call V1, there are columns in, in V2, columns in V3 etc etc. And although it's the cortex is hierarchically organized in this fashion, your world remains a pattern of activation of all of those columns. So when we talk about your, uh, your visual world, we, that kind of, it, it includes that, that deep hierarchy. This is why we're able to look at that image of the New York subway, and we can both think of it as a train, we could think of it as a group of uh, of, of faces, and but we could also uh, break it down into lines. So, 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 so your world contains all of those levels, all of those orders, from simple lines and shapes and colors through to um, much more sort of complex higher order structures, such as faces or uh, people or or trains or whatever. Okay, so. So let's now look at a slightly more 
realistic version of our model. So here we can see um, how a, a world might be structured. So we've got cortical columns um, that form a pattern of activation and they are, they are connected in a, in a specific way. Uh, we'll talk about connectivity in the next unit. So this is, um, if you like, we can describe this as the information Um, which is your subjective world. In other words, this pattern of information, this pattern of cortical columns um, is experienced by yourself subjectively. Um, and we could, in fact, we could separate this if we wanted to into these, this hierarchy. So we can imagine that this is, uh, let's say, V1 this is V2, this is V3. So these columns here would be responsible for representing the basic features of the world uh, and these slightly higher order structures and these even higher order structures. But ultimately, of course, the, the informational structure of the world remains this pattern of activation of your columns, cortical columns. Now, kind of a, a striking validation for this idea that your brain represents, or different parts of your brain represent different features of the world, uh, is provided by people who actually suffer from uh, focal damage to specific areas of the brain uh, that are responsible for representing specific features of the world. So uh, there is a condition called achromatopsia. Uh, this is caused by um, by damage to the area of the brain that represent color information. Now this normally occurs, although it's, it's a very rare condition, uh, when, when someone has a stroke. So a stroke when, when, is when the, the brain tissue is deprived of oxygen for an extended period, either through a blockage of a blood vessel or, or, or damage or rupturing of a blood vessel. And that brain tissue actually dies and stops functioning. And if you have a stroke that selectively uh, destroys the area of the brain, particularly V4, uh, that represents color information, your world changes from being this world full of color to being this monochrome world completely devoid of color. Um, and there is also an even more rare condition called akinotopsia. And this is when you get damage to the brain, again normally caused by a stroke, that represents movement information, particularly V5. And in these individuals, they see the world as a series of still images. It's, it's very difficult to imagine what that's like, uh, but they don't see any kind of movement in the world. The, the world is always static to them, seen as this series of, of, of still images. So, so that's one of the lines of evidence anyway. Um, so I think at this point we should kind of sum up um, because this has been a really kind of important unit in that um, it, it really sets the scene uh, for the units to come. So what have we established here? So we've established that your uh, your brain represents information using cortical columns and that um, every pattern of cortical column activation is a single state of uh, the cortex. And by ruling out a very, very large numbers of possible states, your brain generates um, vast amounts of information and that information um, is experienced by you as your subjective world. We've also looked at how uh, different types of information within this larger complex informational structure are, are handled, are represented. So we have areas of the brain uh, that are responsible for representing color information, for movement information, for, 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 for lines and textures, etc., etc., etc. And then overall, your, this information, this complex pattern of information is experienced by you as your subjective world, your model, your own personal unique model of the world.